So you're thinking about moving to Las Vegas, Nevada? But with the rise of inflation over the last few years, you're not sure what the true cost of living currently is in the Las Vegas Valley. Where are home prices at? How much is a gallon of gas? How about food prices? Well, then this video is for you because we're gonna provide you an update on the current cost of living here in Las Vegas to ensure you are financially prepared for your big move. And towards the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you how Las Vegas compares overall in cost of living to other major cities across the country. So let's get after it right now. Hi, my name is Mark Pepe. If this is your first time to the channel, make sure you subscribe below and tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market here in Las Vegas with so much evolving almost daily. We are passionate about removing the stress of relocating to a completely new city and state. Whether you're thinking about making that move in nine days or nine months, feel free to give us a call, text, or email. All that information is in the description below. You know, so much has changed since the last time I provided a cost of living breakdown for the Las Vegas Valley, just under two years ago. Inflation has wrecked havoc on all expenses, which I realize I don't need to remind you of. You know, with any relocation move, it's important to have a thorough understanding of the financial impact of living in a new city that it's gonna end up costing you. So let's jump right into it. I wanted to start off by first highlighting the average household income, which currently stands at $86,000 a year. Minimum wage is now at $12 per hour. Now, now we know both these figures continue to rise, although many will argue it's not rising fast enough. Home prices usually tops the list when it comes to the cost of living conversation, right? Well, the medium home sold price here in the greater Las Vegas Valley for a single family home sits at $480,000, which is above the national average of $432,700. However, when you compare that to California, which is currently at $900,720, and New York that's at $776,100, you are looking at a 38 to 47% decrease, or I should say savings, just in real estate alone. You can almost buy two houses in Las Vegas for the cost that you pay for one in California. Also, keep in mind, the majority of our communities offer newer homes built within the last 20 years, while some are still being built today. You know, that is a big difference in the age of the home you can get for mo your money here in the Las Vegas Valley. If you're considering renting, which we can help you out with that as well, you're looking at $1,300 to $1,500 range for a one to two bedroom apartment or condo and $2,300 plus for three to four bedrooms for a single family home. Obviously, the location of the home or condo will affect the price in either direction. Now, there is the average annual homeowner's insurance premium, which in Las Vegas currently is at $1,478, which is significantly lower than the national average, which is at $2,728, according to MarketWatch. Rates in Las Vegas tend to be lower than the national average due to the lack of severe weather that is prevalent in other areas across the country resulting in Las Vegas residents less likely to have a loss of use of their property, making premiums lower. Utility costs are another big factor in your monthly expenses, with some of them being variable. Gas and electricity typically average about $250 per month. Now, obviously these costs are seasonal and obviously depend at where you keep the temperature of your home and the size of your home as well. Water and sewer is typically $80 to $100 per month. Trash is $18 per month. And basic internet is approximately $100 per month. So your total on average is approximately $460 per month for all your, your utilities. 
Let's now talk about taxes, which is where Nevada has a tremendous advantage. In fact, Nevada is considered one of the most tax-friendly states in the entire country. This is led by zero state income tax. Nevada is only one of nine states without any state income tax. This results in a savings of anywhere from 10 to 14% of your disposable income, depending on what state you're relocating from. Who wouldn't take a 10 to 14% raise overnight by moving to Las Vegas? I know I would, and that's one of the main reasons why I moved here 16 years ago. You know, in addition, there are no taxes on the following. You have social security, retirement income, such as 401k, IRA, and pensions, estate or inheritance. So those are additional tax savings where you're not taxed at all, where again, a lot of other states will tax in those areas. The current sales tax is at 8.38% which is slightly above the national average. A significant reason why Nevada does not have state taxes is due to the gaming and hotel tax that makes up for it, which pro provides more than a third of the state's revenue. So I think all of you tourists who come to Las Vegas and spend a lot of money, which eases the tax burdens for all of us residents. You know, as far as property taxes go in Clark County, they are based on the assessed value of a home with the formula determined by the Nevada State Department of Taxation. Long story short, the average property tax rate in Las Vegas is currently at 0.64% for a resale home, which is well below the national average of 1.07%. A new home property taxes are currently at 1%, which is always has is always higher than a resale or older home. As a whole, the state of Nevada has the fourth lowest property taxes in the country. For more detail on all tax savings, including business taxes, be sure to check out my video on the top tax benefits of living in Las Vegas after you're done watching this video. Let's switch over now and talk about food and entertainment, which are an integral part of living a balanced lifestyle. Monthly grocery costs can range anywhere from $800 up to $1,300, depending on the household size, dietary restrictions, and whether you prefer buying organic versus non-organic items. This is similar to the national average of $270 per week. However, Overall food expenses in the city are generally 3% higher than the national average. You know, breaking these costs down further, a gallon of milk will run you $4. A dozen eggs is $5.29. A loaf of bread is $4.29. And a ribeye steak, who doesn't love a delicious steak, is $16.99 per pound. Now these prices can vary based on brand, the store you go to, and season, seasonality availability. The increase in food costs we have all experienced have been influenced by supply chain disruption, inflation, and increased transportation costs, reflecting in a broader national and global economic challenges. To assist you in managing your food costs while moving to or living in Las Vegas, here are some options you could consider. Look for local deals. Also, use discount shopping apps and take advantage of loyalty programs offered by grocery stores, which provide discounts and rewards to regular customers. Also, planning meals and buying in bulk can also help in reducing grocery bills. Now, according to LasVegasRestaurants.com, the price of eating out for an inexpensive three-course meal, which includes an appetizer, the main course, and dessert is anywhere from $25 to $50 per person, but does not include beverages and tax and gratuity. While an expensive restaurant will run you anywhere from $75 to $100 per person. Now obviously the range here is based on the type of restaurant you choose to eat at. Here's a quick tip to keeping your dining out costs down. Take advantage of happy hours around the valley with deals as low as $3 for drinks and $10 or less for meals. These deals are usually available during off-peak hours and can offer a great way to enjoy the city's vibrant, 
food scene without breaking the bank. So whether you like home cooked meals or dining out, planning your budget is crucial to ensuring you don't overspend. You also can't live in the entertainment capital world and not take advantage of it. You know, for residents, it often means balancing the allure of the strip with more budget-friendly options. While tickets for major shows and events can range anywhere from $50 on up to several hundred dollars, many locals take advantage of discounts, local specials, and less tourist-centric activities. Additionally, the city's proximity to natural attractions such as Red Rock Canyon and Lake Mead provide affordable outdoor recreational opportunities. Some other costs to keep in mind include the cost per gallon of gas, which at the recording of this video is at $3.84 for regular, regular unleaded, which is above the national average of $3.57. However, compared to states like neighboring California, we are approximately 76 cents cheaper per gallon. And if you have a Costco or Sam's Club membership card, you can expect to save an additional 40 cents per gallon. Movie theater costs are currently $13.50 per ticket. How about a women's haircut and style? Well, I'm obviously not an expert in this field, but according to my research with a number of salons, the average cost is $85. Of course, this number can vary depending on the services you require and the salon you select. All I know are my haircuts are free. <laughs> the average gym membership is $26 per month for one person. I go to a newer EOS Fitness and it's only $10 per month with a $100 annual fee on top of that. You can also pay though up to $300 plus per month for a membership at Lifetime. So there's a wide range of options for your health and wellness activities. And there's childcare costs. The average monthly cost for full-time daycare for an infant ranges from $800 to $1,200 per month, while after-school programs for older children can also add to the overall expense. These costs can be a significant burden for working families, highlighting the need for affordable childcare options in the city. Then there is car insurance, which is a little higher than the national average at approximately $158 per month for full coverage according to MoneyGeek versus $126 per month on the national average. Now obviously there are a lot of variables that dictate your rate premium. You got the make and model and the year of your vehicle, your age, your driving record, etc. You know Las Vegas' rates are higher due to it being a 24-hour town where alcohol is easily accessible and unfortunately leading to more accidents and drunk drivers on the road. You know, a great way to save on car insurance is to bundle your home and auto insurance together. Most insurance companies provide a discount for bundling. Then there is healthcare, which the average healthcare insurance premium for an individual in Las Vegas is approximately $475 per month, while a family plan can cost around $1,200 per month. Now, these costs vary depending on the level of coverage, the provider, and the individual's health status. Additionally, out-of-pocket expenses such as copays, deductibles, and prescription drugs add to the overall healthcare burden for residents. Let's switch now and talk about transportation costs, which are approximately 13% higher than the national average. And this is largely due to the fact that public transit is not widely used with 77% of residents in the Las Vegas Valley driving alone to work and only 10% choosing to carpool. The Regional Transportation Commission of Southern Nevada operates the city's public transportation system with the following charges. You've got two to four dollars for a single ride, then there's three to six dollars for two hour fares, then there's four to eight dollars for a 24 hour pass, and 10 to 20 dollars for a three day pass. These fares make public transportation a reasonable option for those looking to save on transportation expenses, especially for a single person. Well, I promised you at the outset of this video, I would put Las Vegas' overall cost of living in perspective compared to other large cities according to salary.com. Las Vegas is 38% lower than Los Angeles. 
It's 42% lower than New York, 33% lower than Boston, 10% lower than Chicago, 25% lower than Seattle, 45% lower than San Francisco, and 35% lower than Honolulu. I think these figures speak for themselves on where Las Vegas stacks up. The value is pretty evident. Well, I think this gives you a good overview of the most up-to-date cost of living metrics here in Las Vegas. How do they compare to where you currently live if you're not already living in Las Vegas? Let me know in the comments. You know, while the Valley, Valley continues to offer unique opportunities and a relatively modest cost of living compared to other major metropolitan areas, the area continues to focus on balancing growth and development with affordability and accessibility for all residents. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. So please like and share it. Please also subscribe below and comment if you have any questions or found this video helpful. Also, don't forget to check out our other videos on moving to Las Vegas and the surrounding areas so you can continue to get a realistic sense of what it would feel like to live here in the Las Vegas Valley. So, whether you're moving in nine days or nine months, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or even schedule a Zoom appointment here in the description below. We can't wait to help you make a smooth and a stress-free move to Las Vegas. So, until next time, we hope to show you around town very, very soon.